Hello YouTube, it is Mac298 and today I'm going to do a video review of the MacBook Pro with Retina Display. This model has a 2.7 GHz processor, 16 GB of RAM, and a 768 GB SSD. So let's get into the review. One of the main features I like about the new MacBook Pro is how thin it is. It is 0.71 inches thin which translates into being about 25% thinner than the previous generation MacBook Pro. It is 4.46 pounds, which is about a pound lighter than the previous MacBook Pro. Moving on to the ports, the first port is the new MagSafe 2 connector. Now, the MagSafe 2 is a small redesign designed to be thinner and wider than the previous MagSafe. This is just to fit on the new MacBook Pro. Moving on with the ports, there are two Thunderbolt ports, a USB 3.0 port, and also a headphone jack. On the right side of the MacBook, gone is a DVD drive, and in its place is a USB 3.0 port, a first for a Mac laptop, an HDMI port, and a SDXC card slot. If you absolutely need a super drive, they sell a $80 USB super drive that you can pick up at your nearest Apple store or order it online. Another new feature of the new MacBook Pro with Retina Display is the new air vents. There are three on each side of the computer and what they do is they act as air intakes. They take in air from the around your computer and then use it to cool the computer. Now when it's finished cooling your computer it comes out of the air vents on the back of the computer like here. Another new feature in the cooling system are the new asymmetrical blade fans. Now what this does is it makes the fan noise a lot less noticeable. Now I own the old MacBook Pro and the difference between the two is pretty amazing. On the new one you can still hear the fan noise but it doesn't sound really like a fan, it just sounds like a little bit of a background noise. But on the old ones you can really tell when the fan revs up and continues to go. So it's definitely a very welcome addition to the MacBook. Another great new feature on the new MacBook Pro are the redesigned speakers. Now, each speaker has one subwoofer and one speaker, totaling two speakers, two subwoofers. Now, this creates a much fuller sound than any other laptop speaker, or even desktop speaker, I've ever heard. And they were certainly right to market them as the best computer speakers ever. I've been able to play music in my room without using even the stereo that I have in it. and it get to the it got to the point once where my mom had to tell me to turn down the music because it was playing so loud. Now the main feature of this MacBook is the Retina display. It has a resolution of 2880 by 1800, which translates into 220 pixels per inch. It also is an IPS panel, so it has very wide viewing angles. And I just have to say this is probably the best screen that I've ever seen in any computer. Another thing that makes this computer screen so great is the fact that they got rid of the cover glass on the computer. Now this helps with image clarity, but another thing it helps with is the glare reduction. I know there was a lot of complaints about glossy screens on the old computers, and the removal of the cover glass makes the glare a lot less noticeable, up to 75%. As usual on any Mac laptop, there is the big glass trackpad and the backlit chiclet style keyboard. Now, moving on to the specifications of this computer, it has a 2.7 GHz Intel Core i7, and it's a quad core, 16 GB of 1600 MHz DDR3 RAM, a 768 GB solid state drive, and it has two graphics cards the integrated one, which is the Intel HD 4000, which has 512 MB of shared RAM, and also the NVIDIA GeForce GT 650M with one gigabyte of GDDR5 shared memory. Now, most of the time it runs on the Intel HD 4000, but when I'm going over to Skype or doing video editing like I'm doing now, then it has to switch over to the NVIDIA GeForce um, GT 650. Now, there are three main advantages to having a solid state drive in a laptop versus a traditional hard drive. The first one is it is much smaller. It is, I think they said it takes up about 10% of the space of a normal hard drive. 
Second is that it takes up a lot less energy. So it's very energy efficient, which lets you have a longer battery life. And the best reason why is because it's not actually a spinning disk. It's just chips. The, so the data access is actually much faster. I've been getting speeds about four times faster than a traditional hard drive. This computer comes with a 2.7 GHz quad-core Intel Core i7. Now, I have to say, this helps a lot with the performance of this computer, where it actually gets up to being almost the fastest computer that you can buy right now. And I haven't been able to actually get the CPU usage up to 100% yet, but uh, I've gotten pretty close. Now, on my old computer with a Core 2 Duo, everything was starting to choke up on it a little bit. It was having trouble processing video, and um, also ripping DVDs uh, to edit. So really, the Core i7 helps a lot with that. Another thing that helps is the 16 gigabytes of 1600 megahertz DDR3 RAM. My old one had eight, and doubling the RAM definitely helped because on average, I use about 10 to, six to 12 gigabytes of RAM at a time. Now I know that sounds pretty insane, but it's really just from doing this, the everyday stuff. Sometimes I actually do go up to 16 gigabytes of RAM, and sometimes I even have to go up even more um, using the swap, but the SSD makes it a lot faster. Now the first speed test I'm going to do is Geekbench 2. Since this is a tryout version, it's only 32-bit, but I'm going to do it anyways. So here we go. And through the magic of video editing, we now have our score. It gets a 12,335, which is very impressive because most all, because all iMacs uh, get lower than that and some Mac Pros get lower than that. So really, this is the fastest Mac laptop ever to be made. The next test I'm going to do is Cinebench 11.5. This tests the CPU and then OpenGL. So I'm going to go ahead and do the CPU test first. Now, uh, as you can see, the CPU score is 7.01 points. Now, this is actually really impressive because a 3.2 gigahertz processor from last year got a 5.48. So the difference is pretty big between the two of them. Now, the next test I'm going to do is OpenGL. So I'm going to go ahead and run that. So as you can see, the score that my computer got was a 40.62, which is actually really good for the uh, NVIDIA GeForce GT650. So as you can see, this is like one of the best graphics cards. So the second to last test I'm going to do is a really fun one where I'm going to go ahead and open up every single application at once on this computer just to test the solid state drive speed. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And let's go. So as you can see, it was really fast at opening everything. Now, the last test I'm going to do is a SSD read-write speed test. So I'm going to go ahead and start that. So as you can see, the computer is getting around 450 megabytes per second. Now, that almost equals up to Apple's 500 megabytes per second claim. And the read speed is at 455. So it also equals around um, the Apple's promised 500 read-write speed. So I give this computer a 9 out of 10, mostly because this is the best computer I have ever owned. Now the only reason why I give it 9 out of 10, not 10 out of 10, is because it is very expensive. This maxed out MacBook Pro with AppleCare and tax cost over $4,000. Now it really isn't worth getting that unless, you, unless it's your business video editing and photo editing, which that's what I do. So I can make the money back. But... If you were just going to be a regular person buying one of these, I would get the 2.616512 because the RAM is soldered in and you definitely need 16 gigabytes in the long run. 
but besides that, it is definitely the best computer you can buy. Now, I wouldn't recommend the older MacBook Pros because those are going to be phased out soon, and also you get a, it's a better deal to get the Retina ones. So this has been a Mac D98 production. I hope you enjoy the video. Goodbye.